right, we're going to have a look at Sprint 27, because I don't feel number sense problems make fantastic presentations. So Sprint 27, what is the largest positive whole number n, such that 100 factorial is divisible by 12 to the n? OK, so you might think, what if I calculate 100 factorial and then start dividing it by 12? This is not going to work very well, mostly because 100 factorial is really big. I can't calculate that. You can't calculate that. Let's not try. But what we can do is think about what it takes to be divisible by 12. If you want to be divisible by 12, you've got to be divisible by 3, and you've got to be divisible by 4 because 12 is 2 times 2 times 3, 4 times 3. And it's not that hard to find out how many times 100 factorial is divisible by 3, and then how many times it's divisible by 4. So 100 factorial is divisible by 3. How many numbers less than 100 are divisible by 3? Because they're all going to contribute a factor of 3 to 100 factorial, right? Well, it's going to be a third of them. So 33, the number is from 3 up to 99. But some of those will be divisible by 9, and we need to count those again because they'll have a factor of 3 and another factor of 3. In particular, one third of them will be divisible by 9. So that's another 11 numbers. That, it's actually 11 of the same numbers that we have to count again because it's 11 more 3s. And then some of those are going to be multiples of 27, and those we need to count a third time, because 27 is 3 cubed, so those numbers contribute 3 threes to the total number of threes that 100 factorial is divisible by. And that's going to be a third of the numbers that are divisible by 9, which is 3. A third of 11 is 3. We're going to round down, because there's more multiples of 27 that are above 100. And finally, there's going to be some numbers that are divisible by 81. Those are going to contribute 4 multiples of 3, so we need to count them yet another time. There's actually only going to be one of those, and if we give a minute of thought to that, that's going to be 81, right? No other multiples of 81 of less than 100 other than 81, which is nice because now we see that everything has worked out right. We're getting a known fact at the end of this. Okay, this out add up to 48. So 100 factorial is divisible by 3 48 times. Now we need to find out how many times it's divisible by 4. And the easiest way to do this is find out how many ways it's divisible by 2, and then divide that by 2, because the 4 is made up of two twos, 2 times 2 in particular. So we're going to use exactly the same approach. Out of the numbers from 1 to 100, 50 of them are multiples of 2. Of those 50, 25 are multiples of 4, so we need to count them again. Of those 25, 12 are multiples of 8. Of those, 6 are multiples of 16. Of those, 3 are multiples of 32. And of those, only one is a multiple of 64. And again, we can kind of do a sanity check on this. 64 is the only number less than 100 that's divisible by 64. The next number divisible by 64 is 128, and that is bigger than 100. So 100 factorial is divisible by 97 twos. It's divisible by 2 to the 97th. So how many fours is that? Well, that's 4 to the 97 divided by 2, which is 48.5. Okay, now you might be wondering, what does that mean? Can you be divisible by 4 48.5 times? And essentially what it does mean is you're divisible by 4 48 times, and then divisible by 2 once, because the 0.54 is a 2. But also, we don't need to worry too much about that. And here's why. When we're making these 12s, we need a 3 and a 4 to make a 12. So the limiting factor here is the 48 threes, because that's the smaller number. We're going to run out of 3s before we run out of 4s. So 48 is the key number here. We have 48 threes, we have 48 fours, we do not have 49 threes. So the largest number n, such that 100 factorial is divisible by 3 to the n, and also the largest positive number n, such that 100 factorial is divisible by 12 to the n, are both 48. So that's going to be the answer to this problem. Hey, this is Tim. Hope you're enjoying our videos. If so, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, turn on notifications, all that sort of thing. But what I'd really want to invite you to do is to send us an email at media at mathleague.org. Tell us which problems you'd like to see us cover next in our video series. Take care and see you in the next video.